In our latest version of Storyboard Suite, version 111, we've continued to optimize the Lua debugger. The main thing we've been working on is making it easier and quicker for you to launch a new session. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration using one of our sample files of how to launch the Lua debugger. If you're not sure if you're using our latest version, the easiest thing to do is first to simply go to the help contents and say check for updates. And if there is new updates, you'll get them immediately. So in this version, we're going to simply start off by grabbing one of the sample projects, the Lua sample. So if we go new sample, we pick the Lua one, finish, we'll import our Lua example. So now we have our nice little example, it has some Lua scripts, and we click these buttons, they'll call Lua function. So I'm just going to simulate it once because this will save me some time setting up the launch configurations and it'll do it automatically for me. And now you can see here when I click these buttons it changes fonts or dumps the context. So has some nice little Lua examples. So what we'll do is we're going to put a breakpoint on the Lua script that gets called when I click on change the Lua, change the font. So if we come down to this one, we look at the actions for this button, button one. Um, you can see here when he gets a press event, he calls a Lua function called change to monospace. So we'll just hit edit function, it'll open that function up. And we can simply just drop a breakpoint in there. So make sure you drop it on a line with code just works out better that way. Um, the next thing is once we have our breakpoint in, we're going to come over here to our configuration. We see that our configuration is already made, seeing I ran it in the simulator once, so it's automatically there. So we're going to say edit simulator simulator configurations. There's only one in mind, but you could have multiple of these. Um, you can see here my, my different configuration options. So I'm going to go down here to the plugins. If I click on the Lua plugin, you'll see here enable Lua debugger. So if I simply hit enable, apply, we can run it, and we'll see my app tries to start up, but now he blocks waiting for the debug client to connect at port 8171. So he's just sitting there waiting for my debug client to connect. So now that I have that set up, the next thing I need to do is simply go over and open up the debug perspective. So you can see open perspective is this button here over on the far left. If I click on there, hit other, I'll click on debug, hit OK, and now we open up a new perspective for the debug, so you can see my two perspectives up here, debug and storyboard suites, if I want to go back. So now I'm in the debug piece, I'm going to actually set up a debug configuration. So you can see up here, this is the debug, so it's going to say debug configurations. The only one available here is Lua application. If I had, uh, if I'd integrate this with the C and C++ perspectives, they would also be here, or Java, depending on what's available. In the default storyboard suite, all that's available is Lua applications. So I click on Lua applications. I come up here and I'm going to say new launch configuration. So my launch configuration is my Lua sample. It's just a name. I browse to find my project, Lua. It's the only one in my workspace right now. Other than that, all I need to do is say enable remote debug, and he's going to connect to port 8171, which lines up with this app waiting here to launch for somebody to connect to him at 8171. So now I go apply debug. So I bring him up to the front here. We can see my application is launched. And when I click on the button that I'm waiting for, we see we automatically get a break inside of our Lua script on line 40. If we look down here, we're at a break point, so we can minimize him now. And we can see I'm on the line where I drop my breakpoint. I can now simply click and step through. The variables all show up, so every variable that's available. So you can see here I'm filling up a table called V, not a very descriptive name, um, with, the, with the names heading and text and setting the heading font to be monospace and the text to be I monospace. So I've stepped through the first line, so you can see now that table actually has piece heading with what it was set to. If I do one more step, you see text is now there. Other great things to see inside of here is the map arcs that get passed into every option. So if I double click here, I can maximize this to give people a little bit of a better view. And if I open up map arcs, you can start to see everything that's inside of there. So I can see what control was actually pressed. So the control was button layer, button one. Uh, the event that caused it was a GRE press. The event data that came with a GRE press was the button that was pressed, the X and Y coordinate of that press. I can see which layer I'm on, I can see which screen I'm on. And if I really didn't know which function I was in, I could look at to see the script that was called, which is changed to monospace. 
we'll double click and minimize that then I can simply say continue here to resume just like a standard C, C++ debugger I keep on stepping if I step out of here I'll go back to my main program but next time I go to any Lua function I'll automatically break so now I even though I did put a breakpoint here because I'm still actually in the Lua debugger I never hit resume you'll actually continue allowing me to step through any Lua function that gets called after if I click resume come back to my function I click this we won't see it stop but if I go back to here where there's a breakpoint on this button we'll see it drop into the debugger again Anyways, hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to use our new Lua debugger. Um, just make sure you're using at least version 1.1.1 and everything should be great. If you have any questions, please feel free to email support at cranksoftware.com or drop us a message on our forums. Uh, you can find a link off our website.